how England was formed. Um, okay. England, Britain. So I would, I would like to see how that happened in terms of how, you know, when it was formed and how it was formed and how did how did they decide which parts would be England, which parts would be um, Scotland and the rest of them. Yeah. So really looking forward to it. Hit that like button to get this video out to more people and to get more videos like this one. I really appreciate it. Let's get right into it. The existence of England is one that is often taken for granted mm. and looked at far too scarcely. This may be due to the overshadowing history of the development of Great Britain and the United Kingdom. But nonetheless, in order for these unions to be formed, England had to already exist. Okay. It actually has since 927 AD. Wow. So how was England created? Who claimed the land before the English, and how did it become the nation that we know today? England has such a rich history, man. As the Roman Empire began to fade from the British Isles, the area of modern-day England started to see a wave of migration from Anglo-Saxon Germanic tribes. According to some historians, after the Romans left, the native Britons came under attack from the nearby Picts and Scots and subsequently welcomed some of these Anglo-Saxons in hopes that they would push out the other invaders. The Germanic peoples were successful in expelling both the Scots and Picts, hmm. but they then turned on the native Britons and established wow. their own authority by the start of the 7th century. The new Anglo-Saxon rulers then installed the kingdoms of Essex, Kent, Sussex, Mercia, East Anglia, Northumbria, and Wessex on the British mainland. Hmm. There are minimal records of what happened over the next few centuries throughout these kingdoms, but we do know. Wait, 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 wait. I just heard. The... I think some of these names. Wait. Okay. Is it that you know, like when they say the Duchess of Sussex and or the, the the Duke of this and all that stuff in the royal family? Are all those titles related to this? original um how will i put it um the original british or or something if i would say like i i know i'm probably butchering what i'm saying but you guys if you are british i'm sure you understand what i'm trying to say all those titles like when they said the duke of this the duchess of this it's like is this original ones like the sussex which is the megan marco that <laughs> british people now hate but um i think if that if i'm correct tell me down in the comments over the next few centuries throughout these kingdoms but we do know that it wouldn't be long before the anglo-saxons would face invaders of their own in 793 vikings Viking army yeah i knew that at the lindisfarne monastery and raided the sacred building their violence and disrespect stunned the anglo-saxons who were unprepared for what these vikings had in store by the end of 870 East wow, Anglia look at that. That does entry in, entry in. Mercia was lost only four years later. As the Vikings seized Northumbria next in 875, Wessex was the only remaining major kingdom wow. under Anglo Saxon authority. The Vikings were, the <laughs> they were savage, man. Ethelred died. His younger brother, Alfred, was left to protect his kingdom's independence. At first, he did so by paying off the Viking aggressors until he was eventually prepared to lead an army against them. This culminated in the Battle of Eddington, which left the Danes utterly routed and ended their attempts to capture Wessex. A power vacuum in Mercia around the same time resulted in King Alfred also gaining control of the kingdom, and instead of establishing a new monarch, he placed an alderman in charge. This nobleman would answer to King Alfred himself and kept the King of Wessex as the ultimate authority throughout both regions, although a part of Mercia would be ceded to the Vikings. Hmm. After the death of the King of Wessex and the contemporary leader of Mercia in 911, Edward the Elder and Ethelfled each became the respective successors. Together, these new rulers began to increase the pressure that had already been put on the neighboring Danelaw. In 917, 
Ethel fled, expanded her lands to the north, and Edward was able to incorporate all okay. of East Anglia into his kingdom. As Ethel fled, pushed forward with the expansion, she managed to extend Mercian territory all the way up to York, where the locals decided it would be best to simply pledge loyalty to her as opposed to fighting. Although Ethel fled shortly died. Her daughter, Elfwyn, was supposed to take her place and continue on the current course. Unexpectedly, though, the Mercian people quickly ousted their new leader and accidentally created the perfect opportunity for King Edward from Wessex to seize all of Mercia hmm. not long after. Wow. In 918, the Anglo Saxons continued farther into Danelaw territory and slowly gained more and more land for themselves. By the time of Edward's death in 924, the newly acquired neighbors of the Anglo Saxons had all pledged allegiance to the king. This put the Anglo Saxons in a confident position as Edward's son, Ethelstan, took over the kingdom. Around this time, Ethelton's sister would marry the local Viking ruler, Citric, who still controlled Northumbria. Ethelstan marched on and was finally able to bring the Kingdom of York under his crown as hmm. his sister's husband passed away. This left Northumbria up for grabs and the king swiftly consolidated it as part of his kingdom. This <laughs> is generally the time so that historians man. view the Kingdom of England as having been created. But the situation was not exactly so simple. Ethelstan was not done trying to expand his kingdom however he could, and although he did term himself the King of the English at this point, it was still not quite what we know as England today. Ethelstan decided to give an invasion of Scotland a chance to see if he could reach his authority even further. The Kingdom of Scotland, or as it was known at the time, Alaba, was at a disadvantage against the English, and therefore appealed to the other remaining sovereign states for assistance. This prompted an alliance between Constantine II, King of Alaba, Olaf Guthrison, King of Dublin, and Owain, King of Strathclyde. With King Olaf at the helm, the Alliance faced the English at the spectacular Battle of Brunnenburg. Though it is unknown exactly where this battle took place, it is certain that the Alliance was severely crushed by the English invaders. Wow. The casualties on both sides was disastrously high, but Ethelstan and the English were without a doubt the victors. It's believed by many that this clash may have truly solidified the unity of England and stirred up a new sense of nationalism and pride hmm. amongst the English people. Nonetheless, it didn't result in the incorporation of Alaba nor Strathclyde into the Kingdom of England, as both stayed independent. England, on the other hand, would have to prove its ability to do so. The Vikings, though temporarily defeated, would return to the Young Kingdom at the end of the 10th century. After Ethelstan's death in 939, the previously defeated King of Dublin, who was a Viking ruler, took immediate advantage wow, of England's temporary that is crazy. <laughs> While King Ethelstan's brother Edmund took over the English realm, King Olaf swooped in to reconquer some of the lands that had once been in Viking hands. York was quickly captured. And a large chunk wow, of what guys, I'm enjoying this so much. I'm so enjoying this. My mind is just in, into this. And the way this guy is narrating it is so incredible, man. I'm so into this. Wow. Damn. England is so interesting. England, the history. Oh, man, it's so interesting. No wonder the English are so proud of their country. Because with all this history, it cannot allow that this history to be wiped away. Like, you can't, you, can't, you can't allow it to be forgotten. And that is why they they take the royal family very, very seriously. Like, because the royal family is like, the one thing that is still um, keeping the modern English people um, to relate with this glorious past that they had. Man, <laughs> this, is, this is so interesting to watch, man used to be Northumbria and Mercia was also taken as he strong-armed the English into accepting this annexation. Ironically, when Olaf died in 941 and his cousin, who shared the same name, was transitioning to the throne as his successor, Edmund of England jumped on the chance to pay the Vikings back for the invasion. <laughs> this is so funny, year, man. The middle chunk of annexed land Human was beings are fighting. by the English, and in only two more years, the Vikings were entirely pushed out of Northumbria. 
This essentially reunited England, since the territory was now all under Edmund's control. As ambitious as his ancestors, Edmund next invaded Strathclyde, but only took some of its southern territories by the end of the incursion. The rest was given to King Malcolm I of Scotland, as opposed to joining England. It once again appeared as though the Kingdom of England had established some stability. Something else is coming, right? This was once more short-lived. Mm. Edmund was mysteriously murdered in 946, which left his younger brother, Edred, as king of England. The next year, Eric Black Vikings from again. Norway attacked and seized the recently what the hell? liberated Northumbria, which prompted almost a decade of conflicts over who throughout the Isles would lead Northumbria. That's crazy, Eventually, man. the English king was able to once again and permanently reclaim the territory on behalf of England. His death soon ended his reign after this victory, and his young nephew, Edwig, temporarily succeeded him, but was quickly deposed in favor of his brother, Edgar. However, this was only a partial deposition, which meant that Edwig would still hold a small section of the kingdom as a co-ruler. When Edwig died only two years after this decision, Edgar simply took over the whole of England. Wow. Under the reign of King Edgar, known as Edgar the Peaceful, the true foundations of the English kingdom could finally be established. Many reforms were passed, and a vast number of the systems and laws that had existed in the Dane law were actually upheld in hopes of avoiding any displeasure from the Danish portion of the population. Peace, unity, and order were the pillars of Edgar's nearly two decade long reign, and his work helps to fully solidify the unity of the young Kingdom of England. Hmm. The ultimate foundation of England was a long and shaky process, from the initial immigration of the Anglo-Saxons into the region to the establishment of their first kingdoms extending into the invasion and rule of the Vikings. It wasn't until the Anglo-Saxons began to seize territory from the Danelov that an inkling of modern-day England could be seen. After a series of conquering, being conquered, reconquering, and so on, the Anglo-Saxons eventually united the existing kingdoms throughout England. From there, it was merely a matter of establishing solid borders, maintaining their captured territory in order to keep their kingdom physically solid, and eventually, under the rule of Edgar the Peaceful, building the foundational laws and structures of what we know now as the kingdom or nation of England. Wow. I mean, I was so into this one, man. I was so into this one. Wow, man. Guys, England has such an interesting history. I will just, maybe the video is actually making it sound more epic than it is. I don't know. But that the way this guy narrated this thing was, was so incredible. I was like, uh, uh, just trying to, I have to, trying to follow every detail. That was interesting, guys. Um, so that means the English people are Anglo-Saxons. Maybe if I, if, I, if, I, if I ever meet an Englishman, I'll call him an Anglo-Saxon. I hope that is not a, a derogatory um, word to use against the English. So maybe if I ever see an Englishman, I'll probably use it <laughs> and see his reaction. That would be that would, that would be interesting to see. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video because I really did. I was just f trying to follow everything. I be I barely even talked, and I think some people are trying like this kind of reaction videos where people don't talk that much. I guess, but uh, you know, sometimes you know when I'm watching something, you want to comment about it. It's what it is. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. Love you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button to get this video out to more people. I really appreciate it. Peace.